Well, good Sunday morning. Uh, I want to uh, remind everybody that we are live at 5 tonight, and uh, we have the church open, so if you want to come join us, uh, nothing's like being here live. But if uh, for whatever reason with COVID or whatever the conditions are, of course, you can, you can join us uh, on YouTube or Facebook live at 5 o'clock. I know yesterday was a little long and it was a little heady. All right, uh, but that's when we, I was asked to do the Church of Corinth. These are the issues that they were having. And, uh, uh, and so uh, what happens is, you know, again, I, I can only speak the truth, and, and that's what we're doing here. Now, Paul, as we move forward, uh, Paul, we're going to mo be moving into chapter 6 of 1 Corinthians. And Paul, there was another um, uh, he addresses another issue of the Church of Corinth. And that was everybody was suing each other. All right. Uh, believers were suing other believers. They were being taken advantage of. Uh, there, there's a lot of different things going on. And again, it, when I look at the Church of Corinth and then I look at the Church of the United States of America, there's so many correlations, so many things that are, are alike. So we're going to spend a lot more time probably in Scripture today and less time in the, in the notes on it because it's pretty self-explanatory. But we're going to pick up in, in, in chapter 6 starting in verse 1. So grab your Bibles, pens, journals, and we'll start. Does any one of you, when he has a case against his neighbor, dare to go to the law before the unrighteous and do not before the saints? Or do you not, do you not know that the saints will judge the world? If the world is judged by you, are you not competent to form the smallest law courts? Do you not know that we will judge angels? How much more matters of this life? So if you have law, if you have law courts dealing with matters of this life, do you appoint them as judges who are of no account in the church? I say this to your shame. It is so that there is not among you, anyone wise who will be able to decide between his brothers and sisters. But brother goes to law with brother, and that before unbelievers. So what was happening again, they were taking, they had the church, and the church was suing the members of the church. And, and, and Paul is addressing that, all right? And he's saying, why would you allow non-believers to judge believers? Meaning they have different standards than we do. They have different beliefs than we do. All right? And, and, and he goes on to say, understand as a believer, we will be judges with Jesus Christ at the end of time. And in knowing that, can't you find somebody to handle the problems in the church? To be able to rectify the issues without you actually going to the courts to do so? All right, and he goes on, he says, what you're doing is wrong. The, the handle this is wrong. Now, Paul has that backed up by no other than Jesus Christ. Everything, first of all, everything he writes is, of course, God breathed and, and through the Holy Spirit, all right? But we can go directly to Matthew in chapter 16 and start in verse 15, or I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 18, starting in verse 15, it says this. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. See, testimony, witnesses, kind of like, the, like uh, the court, right? If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen, even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Basically, treat them as a non-believer. So, so Jesus goes on to say in verse 18, Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosened in heaven. And I hear so many people quote this scripture, and this is where it comes from. Again, truly I tell you that if the two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with you, which is another verse 
that we quote all the time. So this comes from this. Understand where those two verses that we quote come from. It's Jesus saying, listen, if you have an issue with a brother or sister, you need to address it with them. If you don't get satisfaction, you need to bring in a couple others, non, you know, uh, uh, that, that don't have dog in the hunt, so to speak, all right, and, and uh, be able to, uh, uh, you know, talk to them and see how they feel about it. And if the person still who has wronged you still ignores all that and refuses to repent, then you go ahead and bring it to the church. All right, and so Paul was saying the same thing. Why are you taking people to a, 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 a court system that does not have the values we have, that do not believe the things we believe? Take it to the people of the church. Take it to those that would be in, in leadership, all right, that have wisdom, that have godly wisdom, and get these things rectified. And really what he's saying is you're really hurting the witness for Jesus Christ. When you do this, people say, why do I want to be a, a, a believer in Jesus Christ? They're no different than I am. And don't we hear that all the time, Church of the USA? Why would we want to go to church? These Christians are no different than I am. Their divorce rate still is high. I see them all the time hiding around, doing different things, and doing, doing uh, unscrupulous things, doing bad business dealings. And Paul's saying, that's wrong. And of course, we know it's wrong. All right? So that's what he addresses. So then he peels to them a little further, and he says this in verse 7. Actually, then, it, it is already a defeat for you that you have lawsuits with one another. Why not rather suffer the wrong? Why not rather be defrauded? On the contrary, you yourselves do wrong and defraud, and this to your brothers and your sisters. So he's saying, listen, number one, quit defrauding people, all right? And basically, the rich were taking advantage of the poor is what was going on in that case, all right? And the poor, again, weren't paying back the rich either. It went two ways. And he, and he says, quit defrauding each other and, 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 and be, forgiven when, be forgiving when somebody uh, uh, does something to offend you. Be different than the world, Now, we need to do that, and we need to do it all for the cause of Christ. The church should look different than the world. And the church of Corinth was not looking different than the world. And frankly, in a lot of cases, the church of the United States of America doesn't look different than the world either. So we need to stop, because who is the church? But every believer. Every believer is the church. Every believer is the bride of Christ. We need to get focused and understand who's first in our lives and who is the ultimate judge, and that's God himself. Amen? All righty. Don't forget, live at five tonight. Father God, we, we thank you so much again for your word. And, and oh, you, you convict us. You convict us. So often we don't want to be forgiving. So often we want to have our justification. Understanding, Lord God, that you paid the price for all of our iniquities. Those that, that do something against us and those we do something against. And we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy and your love. And we praise you in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll see you tonight. God bless.